information on the Kanika Jenkins case and stuff. So remember how we were tying all these things together, which was encouraging us to continue to stand for justice for Shanquilla because we believe that if we stand for the justice for Shanquilla and we get it, that that's going to open the door for us to get justice for the other femicides in the past and to decrease future um, future incidents. So thank you, John Q. Let's see, um, Lou says, justice for Shanquilla Robinson, the queen of YouTube and all hearts. All right. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yes. All right. Hey, Olivia, what's happening? What's going on? Hello, everyone, and Merry Christmas. All right. We love it all. Hey, what's going on, Mona D? Mona D says, hello, Trey and everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Y'all coming on here and hit that like button, please. Like, like, hit the like button. <laughs> yes, thank you so much. There we go. Girl, I'll be 50 years old in January. January 31st, okay. Four kids, three boys, one girl, love my family. Good, all right. My oldest son's birthday is January the 29th. <laughs> yeah, so um, yeah, I've got two of those Aquariuses. Yep, all right. Okay, good, 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 good. Representing for us Gen X people. And that's where my passion is at, Gen X, because we are a special generation of people, all right? We was the latchkey kids, remember? We was we was back in the day when they didn't really do nothing about child abuse. You know, you can you could beat the hell out of your kids all you wanted, and nobody could do nothing about it because then your kids, and if you want to beat the hell out of your kids, that's what you was able to do. But nowadays, you know, things are a lot different. So we Gen Xers, we was part of the time, you know, they didn't we didn't get the babysitter, right? You got that key. You were around your neck and you knew not to let nobody in the house. <laughs> you know, we had different rules. So we are a little bit tougher and, and a little stronger than um, some of the you know, younger generation people that get very sensitive. And then we have to tell the whole world to change the language and stuff so you don't hurt their feelings. Because they get mad and they said, I, you said, I was a kid when I say I'm a kid. <laughs> Let me stop. <laughs> I'm just joking, y'all. Anyway, I'm a nurse, and you know, we we not we we're trained not to support delusional thinking. So, <laughs> and here we go. Mona D said, "Merry Christmas to everybody, and Merry Christmas." <laughs> All right, where Miss Natural Beauty's <laughs> gift? Thank y'all so much. I appreciate y'all giving me the love, love and support. What's up, Sonia? Hi, I just subscribed. Love your energy. Thank you so much. Where that's what we're doing over here. We're building this community. We knew over here. We a community of love. And um, that's that's how we get down. Y'all know 90% of nursing is caring. Huh? Here we go. So we doing over here, we doing the thing over here. What's up, Rebecca? Rebecca said, My three brothers passed away three years ago. Three. My brothers passed away, excuse me. My brother passed away three years ago. All the family would meet up at his house. For the holidays but he's no longer here and he is very well missed by the family yeah and that's when it's even more tough when the person who you know was the the place you know the family everybody met at for the holidays and stuff yeah so i'm sorry for the loss of your brother and i know this is difficult during these times when you know when you were used to meeting over your brother's house for the holiday so rebecca we sending out roses and loves and hugs in the chat for you and your family. And um, and I'm gonna do, do this too here. I knew about, baby sis had told me um, about uh, her situation. So I got this little thing made up here. For, and she's stuck down there. We love you, baby sis. <laughs> we love you, baby sis. And also um, Rebecca too. Um, and anybody else out there in the chat that lost a loved one, you know, during this time here, this is why we're here during this holiday time um, to support those that don't have, you know, didn't have a, you know, the family to go over to celebrate the holidays and stuff with. So that's what I'm here for. And again, y'all, I told you I've been a nurse for 30 years. And as a nurse, we already know that we're not going to get any holidays because... <laughs> Right now, I'm going to shout out to all the nurses that's working right now, all the nurses that's working because, you know, uh, holidays off is not in the cards for you. So if you're choosing to get off into this nursing game, be prepared to, um, you know, give up your holidays. No holidays uh, for you 
no holidays for you at all. That's just how that goes. I, and um, so that's why I'm here tonight because I'm I'm used to not uh, really you know celebrating the holidays and stuff. However, I did get out today. I saw um, family and shared some food and some love. And I'm here to dedicate uh, for you all tonight with more um, peace and love and all that good stuff. All right. So let me just get a few more of these here, and then we'll get started with our acts of faith. And then I'm going to do something a little different tonight because if y'all can see, um, you know, channel here is monetized. So I'm going to read off those, um, those, um, the, um, the chat rules and all that good stuff. So we can, you know, make sure that we're keeping our chat respectful because that's how we get down over here. We don't do none of this, um, you know, fighting and being disrespectful or being ugly over in the chat. We don't do that. It's, it's all about beauty, beauty, Beautiful people inside and out. Let's say Olivia says, I'm gonna have to go and watch your Kanika Jenkins, another sad case. Yeah, that's um um John Q. Yep, yep. Exactly, exactly, exactly. And then we were just saying how, you know, all these little femicides, so we having these little um connecting the dots and stuff like that. So that's why it's super important that we continue to say justice for Shanquilla. And Regiment 65 is saying, well, um, Merry Christmas. Y'all, I'm I'm really loving this here, y'all. Thank you so much for coming in here. Wow, Treya, my seven-year-old daughter birthday is, oh, okay, seven on the 29th, yes. My, um, my daughter, her birthday actually was supposed to be on the 29th, however, she was late. She was late and didn't get here until February the 5th. <laughs> And then that was so sad for me. I remember just being so sad because I was ready for that baby to get <laughs> to get out of, of the body. And on that note, I'm going to do something really quick, too, because, you know, I always talk about um, science. And I had got that uh, the pelvis for y'all. And I'm going to do the uh, thing real quick. We're talking about uh, babies and all that good stuff. So we um, now I'm going to save that for a little bit later. I'll say that for a little bit later. <laughs> Thank y'all so much. She says, yes, I'm 55 and you, and you right. Okay. <laughs> Thank y'all so much. Okay. So it's, it's a few of us that didn't, you know, that's chilling on Christmas. That's coming together for this. All right. I see y'all out there. <laughs> JP six says no time for sensitive. <laughs> salaries. I know, huh? Shoot. What's that? The uh, millennials. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we didn't have that kind of like, like, it wasn't like that. We didn't have, you know, you couldn't, you know, you just had to tough it up. You had to tough it up. And then like, we didn't have things like the helmets and all that stuff. We was popping wheelies and all that stuff with no, no knee pads, none of that stuff. You just do the thing. <laughs> you do the thing and you just fix it. You work it out. <laughs> hey, Shy town Fit Queen. Okay. <laughs> all right. That's a new name. <laughs> All right, so shout out to us Gen Xers. All right, John Q said there should be some movement from the U.S. Department of Justice within the next few weeks concerning the warrants that was issued for the aggressor in the case. All right. All right, so that's some good news. That's some good news. That's some good news. Thank you, John Q, for that update. All right, we get the updates over here, everybody. We be coming together putting in the work up in here, just keeping it going. Girl, you light up the room when you get on. I was waiting for you, your live. You, the bomb. Thank you very much. The bomb.com, baby. <laughs> y'all just really, y'all light me up. Y'all really encouraging me and making me feel so good. Y'all turning me on in this here chat. I'm loving this here um, live stream. We'll be putting together here. Look at that. See the roses. That's what I'm saying. We got the roses going. We got the roses going and all that good stuff. All right, we got some more people coming back up in here. All right, here go. What's up, Riley? Uh-huh. And, okay, Ernie. All right, justice for Shanquilla. All right. And see here, we got uh, my daughter is a nurse. Yes, okay, good. Shout out to all the nurses because, like I said, it's a big sacrifice, you know, Um you know, like I said, there's some nurses right now that had to, you know, do a quick little Christmas with their children and then, you know, head out to the hospital or, you know, work last night and then have to come home in the morning, you know, do the little quickie thing with your family and then find you a chair where you can 
you know, sit up and sleep in and pretend to be participating with the rest of the family. <laughs> but um, yeah, nursing is hard work. It's really hard. A lot of people think it's a glamorous job, but it's not. It's not. It's hard work. So um, good for your daughter. That's um, very, very good. We need the new nurses, right? We need them out there. And Deidre says, Merry Christmas and evening to all. Yes, thank y'all so much for coming out on this here Christmas Eve. And we're giving love and support to everyone who's lost someone, you know, during these holiday times. And we are here to, you know, celebrate the memories and, you know, give love. And, you know, this is me giving y'all a big old virtual hug. A big old virtual hug. So I'm just super excited about how, how everything was going. And too, I'm still floating from a few nights ago when we had an awesome live. We had Martin Lewis resurrection uh, come up. Res yeah, res resurrected come up on the uh, panel after we viewed a few of his videos. And he has an awesome channel. He's an awesome researcher and he's um, dedicating himself now to do this, um, what they call this mystery um, type of, um, you know, stuff, this little uh, mystery type of detective stuff. And everything's going really well. And it was a big treat. It was a big treat. And I'm excited because he's going to use the um, some of that footage and he's going to make a video. So I can't wait to um, watch the video and, and, and see us in there and stuff like that. And Thank you, Mac. You had a great question out there, and um, it was we had a great time. We had a great time. So all y'all that wasn't there, go back and catch up on the videos a few days ago. Um, it was really great. Uh oh, I didn't read that. Let me get back on there. What'd you say, Rebecca? Say Baja California is on the borderline of Mexico. Yes. Yeah. Let's see. Um, Queen B says. Come in hitting the like button. Thank you. Let me see what these likes is looking. Oh, that's true. It's 81 people up in here and only 35 likes. I'd like to see the likes move. Makes me feel good when I see the likes moving up in real time. Let's see here. It says, anything new of Shanquilla Robinson case? Let's see. Good evening, All Natural Beauty. Merry Christmas and thanks for sharing. You are welcome. Okay, we got one new person here. Monarch Travel and Entertainment says, Merry Christmas. All right. Excellent. Okay, so what we have been doing here is we've been reading our Acts of Faith. And I've been really happy about reading the Acts of Faith. Like I said, uh, this book, been uh, keeping up with it. It's from Iana. Banzet, um, y'all might know, ooh, how do I do this? There we go. <laughs> um, from Iana Fix My Life. But back in the in the 90s, she was an author, not was, but she, you know, was uh, working, you know, doing an author. So she had books, um, a Yoruba priestess, a cultural custodian, a spiritual life counselor, and her book's very powerful. This Acts of Faith is daily meditations for people of color. And, you know, it's really just for people, people, all people. So they're daily ones. And today is December the 25th. And what I love about this is that this these words are still very prevalent today. And um, it's, it's real positive for manifest, manifestation of all good things. So here we are, December the 25th. And it says, Make a prayer acknowledging yourself as a vehicle of light, giving thanks for all that has come today. And that is by Diane Yahoo. I'm sure I'm pronouncing that wrong. All right. And then Iana says, just for today, allow yourself to embrace all that you are every moment. Know that you are a vessel of light. Allow yourself to release all doubt about your abilities, the mistakes of the past, the fear of the future, just for today. Remember that you have grace. It is called breath. You have a connection to the divine mind, the power source of the world. Just for today, remind yourself, I am one with God. I am one with all the power there is just for today. Be a little child. Know the world is safe. 
Know that you are loved. Know that you were, you are. You know that just, you are just where you are. God is. Just for today, be free. Be peace-filled. Be loving to yourself and all others. Know that you shall not want for any good thing. Just for today, give praise and thanksgiving for everything and let the universe know you are ready to receive more. Let the light shine on me today. I give thanks and praise. All right. That was a really good one for today. December 25th, giving thanks and praise. All right. So I'm super grateful for that and for our chat that we have here. So before we get started with our first video, which is going to be from... Our Oops. Justice, uh-oh. Um, what was that? Justice, uh-oh. Um, Justice, uh-oh. I have a, um, is there a feedback to y'all? Am I, how am I sounding out there? Put a, a, um, a two in the chat if this is, um, like the sound is off. Two in the chat is, is, um, like I, can, I hear myself. Let me um hold up on a second, y'all. Let me get out and come back in. I think I'm in too many boxes. Too many boxes. Get out and come back in. I think I'm in too many boxes. All right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, here we go. There's a problem. Okay. Hello. There we go. Okay, that, that's better. <laughs> All right, so, all right, so the two, okay. I am so sorry, y'all. It should be better now. Is it better now? Put a uh, put a one in the box if it's better now. <laughs> and then hit me with that two again if I'm sounding kind of weird. Thank you, all right. Now, see, y'all should have told me a little bit earlier. I didn't even realize I'm having this here echo. All right, so thank y'all so much for y'all's uh, patience and for sticking with me, but we got it under control now. <laughs> I love y'all. Y'all so sweet. It's sweet loving to me. All right. Okay. So anyway, let's go with, okay. Now I got to pull up the videos again. I had to close out too many boxes. All right. So, um, uno momento while I get, get our docs, get tonight's, uh, lecture back up on the screen here. Ooh. And I hope everyone had a wonderful, a wonderful day um, today, and and all of their, all of their dreams came true. <laughs> all right. So um, let me see. Who did I say? Oh yeah, Luth, um, um, Lucy is going to be our first one. Sleuthy Lucy. Uh oh. Sleuthy Lucy is going to be our first video. And let me cue it up here. Blue Cross Health Plan at healthcare.gov. All right, and we get it ready to share the screen. And uh, here we go. Holy smokes. Okay, so here we go. We're getting ready to see our first video from Sleuthy Lucy as soon as I can get it going here. Got our screen shared, and uh oh, all right, here we go. This one's called um, "Explosive New Information Destroys Kali and Doctor Carolina," and this here is um, one day ago. So here's your recent information. Somebody asked about our update. Examine the story of Shankwala Robinson and the Cabo Six, those six vile travel companions who accompanied her on the trip to San Jose del Cabo, Mexico. And today, it didn't get any better when I discovered another bombshell revelation about this case while working on part three of this video series, The Timeline. Part three is coming, but I had to bring this to you immediately upon finding it. As far as I'm concerned, this is breaking news because no one is reporting on this. 
you are not going to believe this. In fact, you might want to sit down for this one because it's about to blow you away. Uh -oh. What I'm about to tell you absolutely makes it worse for the doctor, Khalil, and Nazir, who crosses his heart and hopes to die in efforts to convince us <laughs> he didn't know anything. He sure. I didn't know nothing. They didn't tell me nothing. I crossed my heart and hoped to die on his Bible. Right? He didn't know the time zone he was in. He didn't know the address to the villa. He didn't know Shanquilla was beaten. He didn't know she wasn't drunk. He didn't know he didn't know. Didn't he know. didn't know she was already dead when he arrived. And unfortunate for him, he didn't know we wouldn't trust the words coming out of his mouth. But first, I want to talk directly to Khalil. Khalil, what were you doing on the afternoon of October 29th around 4.20 p.m. Mexico time? Hmm. Were you doing more standing around watching like we all saw in the video? Or were you making phone calls? I have you on record doing the latter. What? And I'm especially interested in the phone calls to Shanquilla's mother, Salamandra uh. Robinson. Uh. That first call you made to her. You know, the one where you told Salamandra that Shanquilla was sick from alcohol poisoning? Yeah. That she was resting, not really responding, and that you were waiting for the doctor to arrive? Mm -hmm. That call. Khalil, you made a huge mistake uh -oh. during that call. I know exactly what you did. And unfortunately for you, it is hard evidence of your part in the cover-up of Shanquella's murder. It's smoking gun evidence, Khalil. Do you know what smoking gun evidence is, uh -uh. Khalil? According to Cornell Law, the phrase smoking gun has widely been used to mean a discovered piece of evidence Ooh. or fact that proves a theory or a point. In law, the term is most often used to describe a piece of circumstantial evidence that will lead to a person's conviction. Mm. Khalil, I'm about to lay bare what you did to hide the truth. Up to this point in part one, caught, and part two, paid off, we have uncovered some condemning inconsistencies in the police report, like the fact yep. that the doctor said she arrived and found a female who appeared to be inebriated. Look at that. Some stable vital signs, but dehydrated. Now, how are they able to determine dehydration? She didn't, she didn't take no labs, right? <laughs> Look at this line up in here. Showing signs of dehydration, not responsive, oh, but with stable vitals. Mm -hmm. If we are to believe the alcohol poisoning story, doctor, yeah. you do know it would not be possible for her vitals to be stable if she drank an extreme amount of alcohol. Right, doctor? Mm -hmm. We're going to get into it. We're going to get into smoking gun evidence that reveals that the entire police report was a collaborated cover-up. We're going to get into you. when they had the opportunity to fabricate it and how they messed up big. Mm. We're also going to get into the $5,000 that Khalil asked for during that first call to Salamandra. I'm also going to share with you what I believe is the real intention for that money. It's not what you think. And we're going to also discuss the true origin of the alcohol poisoning story. Remember that friend Nazir <laughs> was referencing in his Instagram live? Mexico. Let's just say right here, Nazir, I know who that friend is now. The one you tried to pretend like you didn't know? We're going to get into it all. Ooh. But first, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, we and have. hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on updates to this story, right. trending topics, and so much you. more. Now let's get into it. Yeah. Shanquilla Robinson, a beautiful young entrepreneur and avid traveler, just set it off to San Jose del Cabo on October 28th with six others to celebrate birthdays in the luxurious resort Villa Linda 32. In less than 24 hours later, Shanquilla was found dead in her hotel room. The six travel companions told Shanquilla's mother, Salamandra Robinson, that she drunk too much alcohol and ultimately died from alcohol poisoning. The next day, Salamandra received a disturbing anonymous call saying that her daughter had been attacked in Mexico. Let's take a listen. I got a call from somebody. I didn't even know who it was. And they said that they was over there fighting that girl. Then a video confirming the family's suspicions appeared online showing Shanquella naked being brutally attacked by one of the six, uh -oh. Agent A. Jackson. When the wow. family confronted the Cabo Six, they gave different accounts of what happened, but they all insisted it was the alcohol poisoning that killed her. Mm. The term alcohol poisoning is an interesting one, isn't yeah. it? Have you ever 
use this term? When was the last time you described someone as having alcohol poisoning? Probably never. It's okay, just yeah, not right. a that term that the general public uses when describing someone who drank too much. The term alcohol poisoning sounds more like a medical diagnosis, doesn't it? <laughs> it implies that medical testing has been done exactly. to confirm it exists in a person. Thank to me, you. it sounds much more extreme. And it, it is. And when would they have had the time to determine that? Did they take labs? Did they get a urine specimen? How do they know this alcohol poisoning? How? How? That's not how this works. That's not how this works. <laughs> it's not how it works, y'all. See, Beverly Foster said, I thought I heard Quilla had money in her luggage. Most people use traveler's checks. Maybe the Mexican cops demand more money, which is why they called her mom for the bribery, for the bribery money. Yeah. And we know that Mexico is corrupt and, you know, that it's not uncommon. They take these bribes and stuff, you know. We saw that, you know, just the next day that there was another unaliving and they used the same cookie cutter excuse, alcohol intoxication. It's, you know, you can get them real cheap out there. You can get them real cheap out there. It's like those underground BBLs. You can get them real cheap. All right. And see, oh, um, hey, Johnny says the friends is the, do the doctor. Yeah. Monarch Travel Entertainment says, we are travel, oh my goodness, travel agencies not only offers packages, but we ain't traveling to Mexico for show. <laughs> Thank you so much. What's up days away? Insurance is not a problem anywhere. The doctors can take any insurance and if it's not accepted, you get the bill. So 5,000 was a cover up and so forth. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, they were trying to say that, you know, Mexico has these little different rules and all this kind of stuff. But that's a good point, too, because I was concerned about that. It's like, OK, so you mean you can't go vacation somewhere and something happen? You can't get medical medical coverage, really? Than being drunk. Typically, when someone drinks too much, we refer to them as drunk. Wasted, tipsy, having a hangover, inebriated, intoxicated, two sheets to the wind, and even lit. But alcohol poisoning? is not a term that everyday people use. Thanks. The term suggests something more technical, that the person has crossed a line from being drunk to a more life-threatening level of intoxication. It suggests to me that the person saying it either has a medical background or has received a diagnosis from someone with a medical background. In fact, when I researched the term alcohol poisoning, I was hard pressed to find symptoms that differentiated it from symptoms of drunkenness. Let's take a look. Here you can see some of the symptoms include nausea and vomiting, okay, confusion, slurred speech, aggression, unconsciousness and unresponsiveness, seizures, slow breathing. Now, the last three symptoms have me raising an eyebrow. Seizures, unresponsiveness, and slow breathing, they sound much more serious than typical drunkenness. According to balanceluxuryrehab.com, drunkenness rarely causes breathing difficulties and unconsciousness, though some people who have had too much may pass out for a short time. Take a look at this from Health Tap. Here, someone asked Dr. Anthony Bertino, a clinical psychologist for 24 years, what's the difference between intoxication and alcohol poisoning? He says, they're the same. Every hangover you get. Now, he, this doctor is a psychologist, not a physician. A physician would be a psychiatrist. So um, really, he's not the, the authority to um, say this here is actually symptoms of alcohol poisoning. So whenever you have a hangover, you are actually recovering from alcohol poisoning. In summary, if you're not a medical professional with knowledge on this topic, alcohol poisoning simply looks like drunkenness. So how then did we go from drunk to the more Thank technical you. medical term, alcohol poisoning, without a doctor's diagnosis? Remember what Nasir told us? Let's take a listen. Well, during this phone call, that's the first time I heard that clue was going um, they told me that Kula was, was sick and she was showing signs of alcohol poisoning and they got that because one of their friends. See there? <laughs> they got that because one of their friends. Now look, he's standing up now because he already know the story he's getting ready to tell. Y'all saw how he was all fidgeted and uh, fidgeting around before that, right? And now all of a sudden now he's getting ready to tell the story that he's already planned out. He's standing up because he is prepared to tell this new story. 
Because he 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 already knew what he about to say now. Watch his confidence. Told them that they were seeing signs. So she was showing symptoms of alcohol mm -hmm. He said that a friend of one of the Cabo Six <laughs> wow. said they were seeing signs of alcohol poisoning. So you mean to tell me that one of the Cabo Six's quote unquote friends mm. said they were seeing signs of alcohol poisoning, that Shanquella <laughs> was showing symptoms of alcohol poisoning? Yeah, and what is that? Really, Nazir? How, <laughs> how did this friend Thank see Shanquella's mm -hmm. symptoms? Did they FaceTime this friend for them to look at Shanquella? If you did FaceTime, why didn't you offer that same courtesy to Shanquella's mother when you called her? Yeah. Home? Anyway, back to the friend. Yeah. Whose friend? Was it Nazir? Was it Winters? Was it Dejanay's? Mm -hmm. Whose friend? What was their name? Nazir, you have no idea, but I'm about to lay bare the name of that friend. You know this friend too, don't you? So here's what we know about Saturday, October 29th, the day of Shanquella's murder. By the way, I've explained all of this in part one caught and part two paid off. If you haven't seen those, you might want to review those first. So on October 29th, Shanquella was attacked by Dejanay Jackson in the morning. We know that the death blow took place on the video. Medical experts have confirmed this. We also know that the Cabo Six set it up for the maid to find Shanquella. They made it look like an accidental death by yeah. falling in the bathroom because she was drunk. This is documented in El Independiente newspaper. You can see it here. The attorney general stated in an interview with the newspaper that at first the friends made it look like an accidental death by falling in the bathroom because she was drunk. Now this was translated from Spanish to English, but I want you to notice that even the AG uses the term drunk, not alcohol poisoning. Ride with me here. So the next thing was Nazir's arrival, and he had a lot to say about them moving her body around the villa. There are documented accounts of movement to the bathroom, from the bathroom, to the game room, and then finally to the living room. Then they called for non-emergency medical help at 2.13 p.m. Take note of this, as these are all clues to illustrate what was really going on. Then the doctor arrived at 3 p.m. Let's take a look at the police report more closely to see what happened next. Okay, we see here that at 3.15 p.m., Dr. Carolina arrives. And then it states that she found a female with stable vital signs, but dehydrated, could not speak, and appearing to be inebriated. Right. Which we know right there that that is a lie because we saw the injury, we saw the um, attack. And we know that according to the death certificate, the autopsy report says that she, the cause of death was the severe spinal cord injury and the atlas luxation of the head being knocked off of the body so her head was knocked off of her her spine right and the head knocked off the body right and that after receiving that injury that the life expectancy is 15 minutes so if that happened if the doctor got there at 3 15 it's a lie that she had any vital signs because that was well over 15 minutes before she had received after receiving that injury so the doctor is getting there part of the cover-up because all that that all that there the doctor talking about some uh stable vital signs all lies because she already was expired 15 minutes after the injury Next, it says she was then told by the friends at the house that Shanquella had drunk a lot of alcohol. And then the doctor suggested that they transfer Shanquella to the hospital, but her friends insisted that she treat her in the villa. And then the next bullet says the doctor attempted an unsuccessful IV. What's wrong with this picture? I'll tell you what's wrong. From 3.15 p.m. to 4.20 p.m., the doctor does nothing Thank to you. treat Shanquella. To be fair, her notes say she attempted an now, the other reason why I don't say that, I don't believe that that's a real doctor is because when have you ever had a doctor spend more than six to eight minutes, 10 minutes top in the actual assessment room with you, giving you any, you know, one-on-one -on -one attention, any, you know, when you go to see the doctor, when you go to the doctor's office, you know, you may spend some time in there, you know, getting your measurements and your vital signs and taking some labs or, you know, some things like that. You know, there's some things before the doctor actually 
comes into the examining room to see you. But when has a doctor spent an hour with the um, with a patient, any patient, right? So it's highly unlikely that a doctor would be spending more than an hour, you know, working with a patient. It's not that's not how they do it. It's not how they do it. it you know, it's not how they do it. So that's my other reason for thinking that these these cover up is from lower level people that aren't you know that may be associated or tied in with um, the doctors and stuff that able to get their actual um, names and license number and all that stuff. But I don't think that physically the real doctor was there writing off this baloney stuff because this isn't that don't make sense. IV but failed. So again, nothing was done for Shanquilla during this time. Thank there you. are no signs of urgency reflected on this report. And nobody's spending an hour trying to start an IV. Make your attempt and the person is in serious condition. You're calling 911. You're getting them emergency assistance. You're not fumbling around because you know you need that IV line. You, you need that IV access during important. this first hour. So the Cabo 6 called for non-emergency help. And when medical help arrived, she treats it as a non-emergency. Okay. As so if they call for non-emergency help, why would the doctor have an IV, right? That's not non-emergency. You think, you know, if it's non-emergency, why are they walking around with an IV and um, CPR medications, right? You're not just walking around with a pharmacy full of drugs, right? Or equipment, an IV star kit, all that stuff. That lets you know this is fake, right? If, so if they said they call non-emergency, there's no way that they are arriving with IV stuff. They're, they're not. Or um, adrenaline and epinephrine to do, I, um, do CPR. That's all baloney. It's all baloney. As well, why the patient was unresponsive. Certainly, this would have been reason enough to escalate the situation from the beginning. Yes. Instead of immediately calling for an ambulance, she chose to have conversation. Take a look, it's here in the report. There are four bullets here, and only one speaks of any action. Here we see one bullet to represent a single question and another bullet to represent a single comment, but no action, no urgency, no emergency, and a whole hour yeah. transpires. Notice the level of detail on each bullet after 4.20 yeah. p.m. We now see one bullet for a whole list of activities. It's like two different people gave this account. The first hour, no detail, <laughs> but then at 4.20, we see Shanquella had a seizure lasting less than a minute with sphincter relaxation, at which time Winter Donovan dials 911 <laughs> requesting an ambulance. Wow. Then she speaks of Shanquella exhibiting difficulty breathing and a decreased pulse and so on and so on. Now, <laughs> this is another reason why I know this a doctor wouldn't have wrote that. So they put this out of sequence. Like they were trying to make it seem like here is the, you know, her taking her postly. This is when her demise is happening. The seizure and the sphincter relaxation. This is supposed to indicate that she had her, you know, final bowel movement here and then here. But then they go back to say that they started the CPR when you already ended her here. This, this here is an ending. <laughs> this is this is them, you know, saying that she's been ended right here. But now they brought her back. Right. <laughs> so. You know, this is all out of sequence and making it's, it's, it's almost laughable. <laughs> Very detailed after 4.20 p.m., right? So the doctor who arrived on the scene to find a non-responsive patient and did nothing for an entire mm -hmm. hour tells me through her own documentation that she didn't deem the situation an emergency either. She didn't leap into action until 4.20 p.m. when she says Shanquella goes into a seizure. Now, let me ask you, Dr. Catalina, what were you doing for a whole hour yeah. while Shanquella's body lay there in front of you unresponsive? According to your account, I see more conversation than action. Tell me else did you talk about during that time? Doctor, surely there's more. Let's go to Salamandra Robinson to help us fill in the details of this day. Salamandra, when Khalil called you the first time, what did he say? Well, I received the call on Saturday saying that my daughter was sick and mm -hmm. that she had alcohol poison, but her doctor had never arrived, so I don't know where they had got 
the alcohol poison. Exactly. Um, so at that time, um, they said a doctor was on the way to uh, examine her. And um, she um, wasn't responding, as they told me. said she was resting a little bit, but she wasn't, wasn't all the way responding as normal. So um, I told them to keep me informed. And I wanted to know why they couldn't take it to the emergency room, they said, because they needed $5,000 cash to be seen in the emergency room. And I said, well, she has insurance. And um, they said they didn't take insurance by being, being um, out the country. Wow. It was a little different. Okay, so he said Shanquella is sick from alcohol poisoning. He said that the doctor was on the way. He also said that Shanquella was resting but not responding, mm -hmm. and that it cost five thousand wow. dollars cash for her to be seen at the emergency room. Okay, let me make sure I've got this correctly. So he told you that Shanquella was sick from alcohol poisoning, but that the doctor had not yet arrived. Exactly. It's no wonder you were suspicious. How in the how did he get the diagnosis before the uh, uh, doctor arrived. <laughs> well, did they know she had alcohol Thank poisoning you. without a doctor's diagnosis? Salamandra, what time did you receive that first call? When I got the call, I was out eating about six or seven. Okay, so sometime between six and seven p.m. North Carolina time, Khalil called you for the mm. first time. Yes. Okay, so why don't we pick a time between 6 and 7 p.m. and check that against the police report. Let's say 6.20 p.m. That's between 6 and 7 p.m. Now, if it's 6.20 p.m. in North Carolina, what time is it in San Jose del Cabo? San Jose del Cabo is two hours behind North Carolina time. So that puts his call to you about 4.20 p.m. Cabo time. Uh -huh. Let's take a look at the police report. The doctor what should does have it been say? There already. Wait a minute. It says that Chanquilla <laughs> was transitioning during this time, that she was experiencing a seizure <laughs> with sphincter relaxation and there's no pulse. I told you. What did you say Khalil said again? <laughs> They're saying that my daughter was sick and mm -hmm. that she had alcohol poison. <laughs> but my doctor had never arrived, so I don't know wow. where they got the alcohol poison from. Mm. So at that time, um, they said a doctor was on the way to uh, examine her. And um, she um, wasn't responding, as they told me. said she was resting a little wow. bit, but she wasn't, wasn't all the way responding as normal. So um, I told them to keep me informed. And I wanted to know why they couldn't take it to the emergency room, they said, because they needed $5,000 cash to be seen in the emergency room. So nothing in that call was true. In yeah. fact, we could have picked any time between 6 and 7 p.m. And the police report would not match any thing Khalil said to Salamandra on that call. Wow. But the most explosive fact of this discovery is mm -hmm. the doctor was there the whole time. She was there a full hour before Khalil made the first call to Salamandra. The you can see it here in black and white, right here. He just wrote that. What time does the report say the doctor arrived? 3.15 p.m. Kabul time. And what time did Khalil call Salamandra for the first time? That's why I'm believing that this is all the cover up people because doctors, you know, time is very valuable. So they're not going to be put, that's too much time for that. They got people for this stuff. Like if they're part of it, like if I'm loaning my license number out for the scam for the cover up, I'm not the one actually, you know, doing the work of that. I got minions for that, right? So I'm saying that one of the minions is the one that wrote this stuff. That, documented this stuff maybe if the doctor is in on it it's way at a higher level to where she is just loaning out her name and her license you know as a physician to be able to sign off on these things but this here baloney um story there's no way that a doctor spent you know all that time there you know for to do that to physically be the one doing that no no there's no way i see the journey to justice says, don't forget the fake doctor, backstreet doctor. Exactly. Exactly. Right? And that's what I'm saying. Like these aren't real, real ones here at all. Let's see here. And Beverly Foster. Hey Beverly, what's going on? Nazir Quilla's head was over the toilet. Okay, I forgot about that. With a broken neck, please. Exactly. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. And here we focusing on. Math and science, these things don't add up, right? And that's all that matters, right? Math and science. If it don't add up, we don't uh, do it. And if it's not science, we don't agree with it at all. 
Baby sis says no real doctor would ever do any of what that lady did. She needs to turn her license in. Exactly. What's up, C. Reeves? Didn't the Cabo Six also dress her when they moved her before the doctor came? Um, yeah, I was, um, I'm coming from the school of, I don't believe that they moved the body, dressed the body, or did any of those things. Um, there was video where the, um, the reporter from Mexico um, and the interpreter said that the maid found Tranquilla sitting up in the room in the same position that we saw her end in in that video. That's where she was found in that position. And I'm believing that that's exactly how, because like I said, I've, um, you know, all these years of nursing experience, I did have worked with the spinal cord injury patients, patients that's paralyzed from the neck down, these quadriplegics, and dressing their bodies is not an easy task. It's not easy at all. And I know some of you have said that Dejane is a CNA and she knows how to do that. Maybe. But who is going to have the strength to be able to not only dress a body, a paralyzed body, but one that's so badly damaged, so badly traumatized, where the head has been decapitated from the body and the back is broken and contorted, who is going to be able to dress and move a body like that, right? Like I was saying before when I used to work in the trauma or even in surgery when we get these patients that come in, you know, all mangled and banged up and broken up, you know what I mean? All cracked up. Trying to move them was not an easy task. You had to really think about it. Like if my arm is broken in half, I can't just go grab in my normal spots. I have nothing to hold on to. Like we don't, I'm not believing that the, they said that winter um, grabbed her by the neck and body slammed her. There's no way that that happened. There's no way this is all more lies. I don't believe that they, that they did any of that stuff. They had already purchased their alibi and their excuse. So why do more of this moving the body around like that? And especially, like I said, it was all broken and bent up. I don't see anybody feeling comfortable to, to touch that, to touch it, to move it, manipulate it in any way. Like I said um, before, <laughs> I was talking about the one um, patient that was um, ejected from the car, hit a tree. Like I said, people, y'all wear your seatbelts, please, because you will be ejected from the car and you'll be injured badly. So he's injured. He's smashed head and crushed body from, you know, that. So touching him or coming in and seeing somebody's, you know, all messed up like that is not an easy something. And, you know, these are just regular people. I don't see them their first opportunity being cool with, you know, doing something like that. No. So I don't, I don't see them, them. I don't think they did it. Let's see. M Max says, but when you're in the examining room, the patient is able to talk and describe what's wrong with them. Quilla was unconscious, deceased. Exactly. Exactly. And there's never a time, you know, when you, when I go to make an assessment on my patient, <laughs> you know, the first thing we're doing is looking for signs of life, right? So if I get there to make my assessment, I don't see any signs of life. I'm not just kind of hanging out in the room and seeing if they're going to perk up. I'm not, you know, trying to see what I can do to help them out. I'm getting help immediately. I want the room to be swarmed with multiple people to help me run the code. No one is doing CPR by themselves. Y'all nurses out there, help me out here. Y'all know full well, nobody trying to do CPR by themselves because, first of all, it's very physical. It's exhausting. So them saying that they did 14 rounds of CPR, it's all baloney. No one can do that. Nobody can do that without having to switch out. Do you know how many times we have to switch out? It's physical. And, two, you don't want to be by yourself doing it. You want, you want the team coming in there. You're not. Nobody wants to do CPR out in the field. You want to be in the hospital where you can get respiratory in there and get the person intubated so we can get them on the ventilator. Obviously, she needs some help. They had to come in there and see her head knocked off her body. How y'all getting the airway? You know what I mean? She needs to be at the hospital so we can reattach her. What? So these people is full of lies. Yes. 
And see, see, uh, Reeve says, if the IV failed, wouldn't that have also indicated she was expired? Exactly. They wouldn't have been able to even get an IV. The doctor getting there, you know, hours later, she would have already been in. There was no signs of life. This is all made up stuff, you know, to try to show, try to paint the picture that they were given help. Like this all sounds like, you know, the documentation that we would document if you was running a code or something. So it sounds like here is the chain. You no, know, this is the, the plan of care. This is what we have rendered. This is what went down. But this all, all lies. Thank you, C. Reeves. And see, the journey to justice says, so how did the birthday boy react when he found out they beat her to, yes, I don't know. You see, C. Reeves says, you're right, cover up. For non-emergency, they wouldn't have all that. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Like they just have this whole kit and they back, you know, you, you, no, you're not walking around with that kind of stuff. Nobody is. See, Wanda Word says, um, very point, the non-emergency. Yeah. Okay. That's what I'm saying. We just listen and we point out all these clues and it doesn't add up. So that's why I said over here, math and science, none of this stuff is adding up. And we saw the science of what happened with the injury. So that's how we get that. All right, let's go on and get finished up with this video. 20 p.m. hobble time. Let me repeat that. The doctor was there for a full hour before Khalil even called Salamadra for the very first time. Now, let me remind you what he said. Wow. He said the doctor was on the way. <laughs> Khalil, the doctor had arrived an hour before you called yeah, Salamandra. She was in the room. Not yeah. only that, you had an hour of idle time with the doctor, according to her own reporting, to talk about the plan to cover up this murder. What else did Khalil say? He said Shinquella was sick from alcohol poisoning. Mm -hmm. Now, we talked about this term being a medical term, didn't yeah. we? Most people say someone is drunk when they drink too much, right? Mm -hmm. In fact, when we look at the first hour on the police report, even the doctor said the friends said she drunk a lot of alcohol, mm -hmm. not that she had alcohol poisoning. Tell me, who in that room was qualified to make that diagnosis? The friend Nazir told us about Dr. Carolina. Nazir, you were there when she made this diagnosis. You witnessed her making this diagnosis. I you know? nothing. <laughs> I got there an hour later, the nurse came in the door. Now listen again to what he said about the friend. And then he said the nurse, right? So we do know that nurses and doctors, two different, two different, um, 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 uh, uh, two different industries. And because one of their friends told them that they were seeing signs. Oops. All right. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> there we go. So, you know, multiple lies, multiple lies, multiple lies there. Multiple lies. So, um, like I said, I don't believe that, you know, I, I'm thinking that the people, the um, lower level, the minions that run these type of scams, we saw how corrupt Mexico is and that they're um, selling these little alcohol intoxication alibis a dime a dozen. Like you can go up. It's just like getting one of these BBLs in these little, you know, low budget countries. That's what they're doing with these um, death, you know, um, police reports. Right. They're not death reports. They're these are the police reports and the so-called emergency first responders, which we found out that those aren't real responders. They're just people. They're just regular people that, you know, if they feel like it's something, then the police, the real police will look at it later. But the first responders are nobodies. So they're the ones that probably paid the lease and they're the ones that'll be more likely to take the bribe. They'll be happy to get that cash. And so it's like a um, it's like a whole system. They have a whole system of how they're doing this. I'm trying to stay off in this little screen. The whole system of how they're doing this whole thing, you know. Let's see here. Um, Journey says they never once said she was being sick in a bucket in a toilet all day. One, no one's today's mentioned puke. Exactly. 
And usually if you have too much to drink, what's the first thing that you do? You don't even have to try. Your body will naturally have you throw up. Your body will naturally, because there is a such thing as alcohol poisoning, because there's a lethal dose of alcohol. And the lethal dose remains the same whether you have a tolerance to the alcohol or not. So usually when people have the alcohol um, poisoning or they die from the alcohol, they, these people have been drinking for many years. So that, that way their tolerance is so high to where their body will ignore the levels getting up higher. So they won't necessarily throw it up. So if, you know, Shanquilla don't have no history of this binge drinking and all that stuff, it is super highly unlikely that they could have given her an alcohol <laughs> intoxication or poisoning um, death. Unless somebody just put a funnel in her and just poured alcohol in her. It's, you know, it's not going to happen. Cause like I said, most of the time I'm some of y'all, I know y'all didn't been drunk before where you, you know, had that too much to drink. The first thing your brain is going to do is going to send a signal to your stomach that, hey, we got some poison in us. We got too much of something. And you're going to be throwing up and having diarrhea at the same time. <laughs> and uh, yeah, trying to get that. Your body is trying to get it out of you. You know, that's how that goes. Let's see here. Um, Baby Sis says that report starts out with the biggest lie told first, non-responsive with normal vital signs. <laughs> that doesn't happen exactly, right? <laughs> because that's part of the vital signs, your level of consciousness. <laughs> exactly. And that's a big one there where we know we need some urgent instant care if someone's non-responsive, right? What do you do when you get there? You're supposed to shake them. Are you okay? Are you okay? Right? <laughs> that's what you're supposed to do, right? That's what we are taught to do when you take CPR. You get there to the scene, you see somebody down, you shake them and see, hey, are you okay? Are you okay? Now, you call 911. You get the AED. Now you start getting the thing in action. So how is it that these first responders going to come there and nobody did none of this stuff, right? Good one, baby, says that is exactly right. Lies from the beginning. Rebecca says the person that attacked Shanquilla needs to be arrested now. Yeah. I feel you on that. And like I said, we're just here waiting and, and hoping. We have to be patient. That's what they're telling us. Hey, Superstar Graham, what's going on? How you been? Nice to see you again. And Max said, I wonder how the doctor is paid. <laughs> A flat fee per visit or based on time spent? I know, huh? Because uh, what was that? Uh, Martin had told us something that, you know, them ordering <laughs> this dial a doc <laughs> is a real thing. Superstar Graham said, just came in from my family. Happy holidays, everyone. Good. I'm glad you enjoyed some time with your family and still spending time here with us. Yes. Thank you so much. And baby sis says that fake doctor is simply repeating what they told her. I believe Shanquilla had already expired when the so-called doctor walked in. Exactly. Yeah. Yes, that is exactly right. So because if the doctor got there an hour later, we know that the lifespan expectancy is 15 minutes after that injury. So, you know, of course, she was already already expired before the doctor got there. And th those are facts. That's what we do know. And that's what adds up. That is the science and that is the fact. 